Continuing our initial look at vectors, we're now going to take a look at adding and subtracting vectors with scalar multiples. And we're going to do this graphically. Okay, so first let's define what a scalar multiple is. A scalar multiple is simply a vector multiplied by a scalar. When you take a number and multiply it by a vector, this results in a change of size or a change of magnitude of the vector. In other, in other words, we're changing how big or how small the vector is, how long or how short the arrow is, if you will. But we're not changing the vector's direction. Okay? So you can think of scalar multiplication as scaling. You scale the size of the vector. Let's get an example in here for you. For example, 2 times the vector a. So here's the, here is the scalar 2. Remember, scalar is just a number. This is twice vector a. Okay, so 2a is a vector. twice as long as the vector a, okay, but as I said here, in the same direction. Scaling a vector does not change the direction of the vector, it only changes the magnitude. All right. Let's take a look at uh, an example of this. I'll use my ruler to give, me, to give us a, a sense of, you know, kind of a better sense, make it reasonably precise. Example one, given vectors a and b, find the vector 3a plus 2b. Okay, well, I need to do a, I need to give you vectors a and b. So let's see here. I'll make vector a. Uh, one inch to the right, and I've kind of done this in previous video lectures, nothing fancy here. And I'll make vector B a half inch up and to the right. Okay, this is vector B. So we want to find the vector 3A plus 2B. Okay, so we need to find, let's do 3A. I need a vector that is three times as long as this vector in the same direction. Okay, well, A is three inches. So, excuse me, A is one inch. So, one, two, three. Okay, same direction. Three times as large. So, this is vector 3A. All right, 2B, okay, well, 1B is a half inch, so 2B is going to be a full inch. And again, I'm not using a protractor, so I, you know, I hope I've got it. I got it in the general direction. And here's the vector 2B. The vector 2B is twice as long as the vector B in the same direction. We add them up head to tail. So we know that the sum of these two vectors, which we've been calling the resultant, okay, would be this one right here. And this is R, the resultant. Okay, and so down here I'll say that R is equal to 3A plus 2B. So that is adding vectors with scalar multiples right there. Okay, now let's talk about subtraction. Let me get a couple of things out of the way here. Subtraction is fairly straightforward. If I got myself straightened out here, I think I do. Vector subtraction makes use of the fact that subtraction is equivalent to adding the opposite. Okay, we, we learned that when, we talked, when, when you learned about integers way back when. In the case of vectors, the opposite of a given vector is the vector that has the same magnitude with the opposite direction. Okay, so 
put an example down what this looks like. If I say to you I want to take vector A and I want to, whoops, I want to subtract vector B. Well, the way we do that is we're going to take X, we're going to take, excuse me, vector A, and we're going to add the opposite of vector B. So we're going to replace subtraction with adding the opposite, and then we're going to add, because we know how to add very easily. Okay, let's take a look at an example of this. Given vectors A and B, find the vector 2A minus B. Okay, well, I will continue with the pattern of making vector A a horizontal line of one inch. And vector B, uh, this time I'll make vector B also a one inch vector, but it goes up and to the right. Why not? Okay, so there are our vectors A and B. Well, the first thing we we'll get so A minus B. Well, we need to come up with the we need to come up with a vector negative B. Well, if this is B, then negative B, and I should be able to get that is one inch one inch. Excuse me, in this direction. So this is the opposite of vector B. Okay, so I simply I got the same excuse me, at the same magnitude, opposite direction. Now I'm going to add 2a plus the opposite of b. Okay, so here we go. Let's do 2a. Vector a, of course, is one inch that's horizontal. So we'll do a vector a that is two inches horizontal. There is vector, whoops. There is vector 2a. And I'm going to add this one. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to copy, go do head to tail with this one. And I think I can make sure my sheet is, we're still seeing things okay, I believe so. We'll go down one inch. Okay, so this is the opposite of B. And so the resultant, again, first head to last tail. Excuse me, first tail to last head, excuse me, is this one right there. So that's the resultant vector. Okay, so our resultant is equal to 2a, 2 of the vector a, plus the opposite or the negative of vector b, which of course is the same thing as 2a minus b. So adding, we're going to, excuse me, subtracting, we're going to add the opposite. All right, let's take a look at uh, an example, a uh, real life example here. I'm going to make use of a protractor. Uh, we'll see that this can get a little bit, a little tedious because we're going to find other ways to do this more perfectly or more precisely. But here's an example. We're going to add some vectors. To avoid a storm, a jet travels 60 degrees north of east from Detroit for, for 190 miles and then turns to a direction of 10 degrees north of east for 280 miles to Ottawa, Canada. Find the displacement. Of course, displacement is both uh, direction and magnitude from Ottawa, fr from Detroit the displacement of Ottawa from Detroit. Okay, I've already done this, so I know I want to start down. Well, let's first off do this. Let's have one inch equal 100 miles. And you can probably already tell that the precision is going to be a bit lacking, but we're going to get a general idea. Okay, so here is Detroit. Detroit. Now, 60 degrees north of east. Okay, I'll first do a, I'll just kind of do a dotted line. This is east. 
and I want to go 60 degrees north of east. So with my protractor, here is 60 degrees, and I want to do that for 190 miles. Well, here's where you can see the precision is a little bit, a little bit difficult. 190 miles. Well, if one inch is 100 miles, we're going to be a little shy of two inches in the 60 degree direction. So this is 60 degrees and we did the best we could with a ruler, an inch ruler. This is 90 miles and that is our initial vector, our initial heading. Okay, and then it turns a direction 10 degrees north of east. Okay, we need another east here, so I will do another horizontal line Okay, because this is going to be, help me with my east and my 10 degrees north of east. And now I'm going to put my protractor up here and 10 degrees north of east is right here. There's 10 degrees. And we're going to go 280 miles. Okay, well that's a little less than 3 inches. So we're going to go... One, two, not quite as far as, okay, how about there? Okay, this is 10 degrees north of east, and this is 280 miles, and here we have Ottawa. Okay, find the displacement from, of Ottawa from Detroit, okay. So this is our resultant vector right here. Okay, from head to tail, and there it is. And this is our resultant vector. And the question is, okay, how far is that, and what is its, uh, what is its direction? Well, one inch is equal to 100 miles. So we can see here that... Uh, 100, 200, 300, 400 is between 400 and 500 miles, a little less than 450. And again, we're using a ruler. We haven't been overly precise. We've approximated. So let's call it, I don't know, 435 miles. Okay, so we, we think this is around 435 miles. Okay, and we need to know, we need to know what this is. What is this angle? And so we come into here, and it looks like we're right about 30 degrees. So this angle is 30 degrees. Now again, not very precise. The angle was more precise than the distance, but we got the general idea. We'll find the displacement. The displacement of Ottawa from Detroit is 400, excuse me, I've got another number in my head for some reason. It's approximately 435 miles. Thirty degrees north of east. So there's how you do it. You can solve a, a, a more of a real life problem graphically. We're going to find out very shortly in the next uh, as we get into our next set of video lectures. We're going to find out how, to, how we can do that much more precisely using vector components. But there's how you can do it graphically, pencil, paper, uh, ruler, and a compass.